Sung Yoon Lee is a professor of Korean studies at the Fletcher School at Tufts University. He's also worked at the Korea Institute at Harvard University. Uh, professor, you know, uh, President Xi and Kim Jong-un have met many times in the last year or so, always with Kim traveling to China, though. What is your take on this visit, and how significant is it for a Chinese leader to travel to the DPRK? Well, in international politics, as in business or show business, timing is key. Now, of course, Kim Jong-un has visited China four times over the past year since March 2018. So uh, a visit by a reciprocal visit by the Chinese president was uh, in order. But why now? Well, as you mentioned just now, next week we have the so-called G20 summit in Osaka in Japan, where you have President Trump, President Putin, President Xi, President Moon of South Korea, all hosted by Japanese Prime Minister Abe. What does that mean? President Xi will carry a message from Kim Jong-un to his neighborhood, to his neighbors, which will be that the U.S. stance, its inflexibility, its sanctions enforcement is an impediment to making progress on denuclearization. So that message will carry weight. And moreover, Kim Jong-un, if he chooses to escalate by conducting another missile test soon after the G20 summit, he will effectively have bought himself an insurance policy against forceful reprisal. So it's a good move by Kim Jong-un to have President Xi visit him at this time. And given the impasse, both the DPRK and China, with the United States on various issues, you have the trade war on one hand and, and nuclear issues, what are you looking for? What more are you looking for in their discussions? Well, I mean, it's a cliche, but of course, China finds North Korea to be a very useful card vis-a-vis -vis China's greatest long-term strategic competitor, i.e. the United States. So even on uh, the mounting tension between the U.S. and Iran on the China-U.S. trade issue, uh, the message that President Xi will carry to Japan for the world uh, will give momentum, further weight to uh, President Xi and also to Chairman Kim, their stance, which is the U.S. needs to make more concessions. That message will become more and more credible to the world. And it seems like these two leaders have met, um, they've planned these meetings ahead of other big international events. So no surprise there? No, no surprise there. But again, I think it's um, a well-coordinated move by both Kim Jong-un and President Xi to have this meeting just one week before a bigger international event. In 2000, President Putin made his first visit to North Korea and met with Kim Jong-il just a couple of days before the so-called G8 summit, uh, also uh, in Japan in July 2000. And President Putin told the world that Kim Jong-il, who had just come out after six years years of self-isolation, belligerent, strange behavior. He had made a secret visit to China in late May 2000, hosted the South Korean president in mid-June. Putin told the world that Kim Jong-il, we can do business with him, and that Kim Jong-il had told him if the United States or Russia would launch satellites, North Korean satellites, on behalf of North Korea, then he would give up his ballistic missile program. Later on, Kim Jong-il said he was just kidding, so Putin lost face a little bit. But but the point here is any message of uh, a conciliatory gesture by North Korea at this point will carry some credibility. All right, Sung Yoon Lee, thank you so much for joining us from Massachusetts. We appreciate it.